John Smoltz is uh, set to join us, and uh, he'll be on the call tonight on Fox. And uh, John joins us on the program. Uh, I hear you're golfing today. Where Where are we golfing today? Today's congressional. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, RTJ. All right. So, do you call up, or do you have an assistant calling up that says, uh, "Hey, John Smoltz, Hall of Famer, would like to play golf today"? No, I call up. I call up. I got a lot of. You know, you meet the right guy. He knows everybody who knows everybody. And next thing you know, you're you're hooked up. But it felt like, I mean, this is the life of a pitcher. Starting pitcher is the best life you can possibly have in sports, right? Four days of golf, Absolutely. right? Greatest job in America if you do it well. Not so much if you don't. <laughs> Got to wait too long to, uh, un- and that's why, you know, when the life of, 14 years as a starter, and they said, yeah, we want you to close now. I was like, I wouldn't. It didn't. And then I'm not so sure about that. But it all worked out. Did you ever golf on a day you pitched? Yeah, but never as a starter. So as the closer goes, you don't know when you're going to pitch. So you basically get it done in the morning, and uh, you pitch 10 o'clock at night. So, if you, you know, my theory was if I couldn't get three outs – at 10 o'clock at night, uh, something was wrong. Uh, take a nap, get ready. It was great. It ended up being great. I played more golf as a closer than when I played as a starting pitcher just because you don't know when you're going to pitch. So my manager was cool with it. 55 saves after the first year, they didn't really have an issue with it after that. Do you think you would have come up as like Rivera and been a, a closer if you'd have known you could have played as much golf as you did as a closer? Now that would have been, yeah, that would have been a little different uh, if I knew uh, what those three years are going to be like, but there's still nothing like being a starter. There's, I love the structure. I love knowing everything that I was going to do when I was going to do it. You're, it, it, it when you're a closer, you go by the seat of your pants. Nothing. It's it's just not my personality, but I adjusted for that short time frame. Is this a must win situation for the Astros now? It is. It is. Yeah. Um, two things I always hated when uh, we got ourselves in these situations more times than I cared to as it <laughs> did when I was playing is, uh, Oh, you know, we'll win when we have to, uh, that's a, that's a bad statement. And or our backs are against the wall. We have nothing to lose. That's a false statement. But what you do know when you come into a series like this, when you're favored, which we were favored a lot, is you have to win. And uh, technically, it's not, you know, an elimination game. So you can always say that that's not the case. But, yes, the Astros have to win tonight. They've got to, um, in my mind, they've got to have this statement. We just need Cole and Verlander to pitch one more, and we'll take our chances. I mean, that's what they got to have. That's got to be their their statement, because if they win tonight, they're guaranteed Cole, and then see what happens after that. I find it interesting that the Nationals were not given much of a chance. Astros, the biggest favorite since 2007. Then the Astros lose the first two games. So the Nationals went from there's no pressure on them to now it feels like there's a little pressure on them because now they're the favorites to win the World Series. Does that change their style at all? Uh, not really, but it's a great, great position to be in. You know, I, I, unfortunately, um, doing these games now as a broadcaster, I have to be reminded of the 1996 Yankees Braves World Series that my <laughs> man Joe Buck likes to bring up. Just for context and reality is that we won the first two games on the road, came home, <laughs> and didn't win another game. So, you know, in sports, managers, teams, coaches, they will use past experiences to remind everybody that this can happen no matter what the stats say. You know, the hardest thing to do is close out a series. So um, as excited, and they should be, the fan base here is probably now over their little bit of a can-you-believe-this uh, feeling, and they're looking at finding a way to win two out of three games. This is a hot team. It's a great story. You couldn't write this script and in LA, but as they know, um, it's going to take some, uh, it's going to take the same kind of playing execution that they have been able to show over the last month to uh, beat the Astros. If you could have the stuff of any of the pitchers in this series, who would you take? Wow. I mean, it, 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 it's so hard for me to pick between Strasburg and Cole. I mean, Strasburg to me, ever since I, 
you know, the, the world's not fair for him in the sense that he breaks into the scene. He strikes out 14 guys in his, I, I, I did the game for MLB network. And I said, going into the game, I'm not getting caught up in this pipe. This is an overhyped machine. This guy has no chance to live up to it. People are building this up as the greatest start in the history. I said, I'm not getting involved in it. I'm just not going to get it. I, I was so locked in, so involved. He struck 14 guys out. And unfortunately for him, the rest of his career has been, in most people's eyes, what he hasn't done. And he finally, in this year, has been able to break through. He's so nasty. Uh, so unassuming with where most people, you know, would love the attention, maybe not so much for him. And between him and Cole, I mean, you got your pick of the litter. You got a mach- You got like if you had to com- you could combine the four of these guys and make like the Terminator of pitchers. You know, you take the motor of Scherzer, you take the 10, 10 speed bike gear of Verlander and what he can do from the beginning of the game to the end. Of course, Cole has reinvented himself into the most dominant pitcher we've seen in a long time. And then you got Strasburg that could basically tell the hitter, I got four pitches. I can tell you what's coming. And if I execute, there's nothing you can do about it. We're talking to John Smoltz, Hall of Famer and full time golfer, part time broadcaster for uh, Fox and the Major League <laughs> Baseball Network. Does Joe Buck go and play golf with you, or does he? What does Joe do? He does. We've played a few times. Joe's a real good golfer, obviously the best in the business at what he does. So, uh, you know, I get, I get Kevin Millar out here, Mark DeRosa. I've got my my cronies out here that basically, you know, Kevin's good for, um, he's good. He's good for the, for the Uber money. I'm a great shower buddy, Danny. You know it. (laughs) (laughs) Millar loves to talk about showering with guys though, John, just so you know. Yeah, I know. I know he does. <laughs> <laughs> he he always tells me the worst body he ever showered with. Do you want to weigh in on that? He he would tell you? Yes. Oh, he's a better man than I am. Yeah, yeah. Better man. <laughs> he said he said shilling his first ballot. Bad, bad boy. <laughs> well, I can't. I can't speak to that. I never played with. Uh, I never played with Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, have fun today and uh, play nice, John. All right, I will. Thanks, Dan. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune into Audience Channel 239 on Directv. Stream for free on BR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.